Hey, this is Peter from Nexton Web. Welcome to the latest episode of the How to Build video series. In this video, I would like to show you how the layer slider was created, with its effects and other features. Create a new slider on the dashboard. Let's call it Layer Slider. It should have 700 pixel height and full with responsive mode. Press Create. With the Add Slide button, select the images you would like to have. I will create three image slides. If you take a look at their responsive behavior, you will see that as the slider goes bigger, the slides will go bigger as well, keeping their original ratio by default. This way, the slider can grow quite big, so we should avoid that. Under the Size tab, you can find the responsive settings, such as the maximum height. With this value, you can limit how high the slider can go. So now the size of the slider will stay decent. Save the slider and go inside the first slide to start working on it. To add an overlay color for the background image, go into the background settings. Lower the opacity of the image, because the color will be behind it, and you can select the color. The slides will have gradient colors. Now that it is done, you can apply heading layer. Write the first text in it. On its design tab, change the font family, the size and the font weight. The line height should be smaller and the text alignment should come from the parent settings so we could manage all the text together. Inside the more settings option, we can find the settings which are rarely used, such as the text transform. Apply the changes and the next heading layer can come. It will automatically copy the style of the previous layer, so all we have to do is to change its text. The last title line will be an animated heading layer. We won't need the before text, because this will just replace some captivating texts. Fill up the animated text with the lines you would like to use. The typewriter effect will animate the texts. The effects highlighted text should have a similar color to the background. The animation will loop, the speed will be faster, and the duration longer. Let's take a look at what we have done. The text will get highlighted and rewritten by the animation, just as we want it. Now these texts should have the same design the heading layers have, so I will just select them quickly. Once it is done, a text layer comes. This will show the longer description. Go to the Design tab to select the styles. The font family will be different, and the color will be a little bit transparent. The size and the line height should be increased and the text alignment will come from the parent. After the text is done, we can position everything from the parent element. The maximum width of the content layer will be smaller, and we will adjust the text and the whole content to the left side. There should be a small distance from the left, and the rest of the layers can come. Put down a two-column row. This will hold bottom layers. Replace the text and click on the link icon. Links have a lot more options than just pointing to URLs. This is where you can insert like boxes, or create other clicking actions. There are scroll to actions, what you can check out in the previous How to Build video, and there are slide switching actions. With the Go to slide, Previous and Next Slide options, you can go to specific slides. Here, I will need the Next Slide action. Go to the Design tab to change the layout of the button. The Normal and Hover states will have blue and white colors. If you use borders, you should add them to the Normal and Hover states too, even if it's not very noticeable, because that extra few pixels around the button is necessary to have the same button size for both states. I'm ready with this button and the new one can go to the second column. The link action of this button will be that it should go to slide 4, which I will create soon. The colors should be inverse, and we can work on the positioning. Remove the left padding and margin from the column and row elements to have the buttons line up with the text. Then lower the maximum width to have the buttons closer to each other. The last element will be inside the three column row. Each column will contain an image layer. These will be social icons that you can link to your social URLs. Just select the images and the positioning can happen from the row. We won't need any gutter or padding. Decrease the maximum width to have the icons closer. 
Lastly, with margins we can adjust the vertical spacing between elements. Check out the tablet view. With the font resizer, we should make most of the text smaller. All you have to do is to select them and lower the font size percentage value. We won't need this much space between the elements, so the margin can be decreased as well. The text of the buttons will be smaller too. And with the maximum width, they can be closer to each other. Decrease the margin to have less space under the buttons. The content layer shouldn't limit the width anymore, but there still should be a padding on the right not to let the layers touch the right side. Go to the mobile view. The texts are way too big. You can decrease font sizes of multiple layers by decreasing the font size on the parent element. Then you can still decrease the font size on the layers too. You can lower the margin values similarly to what we have done on the tablet view. These buttons would look better in one row, so let's change the wrap after settings to zero. Now we should lower the spaces between the buttons and around them to make them look nicer. The same way, adjust the icons to have them in one row. Lower the maximum width to have less space between them. And adjust the padding on the content element to have some proper distance from each side. The animation setup of this slide is quite simple, as every layer will have the same layer animation. Select the first layer and go to its animation settings. The left fade animation will be a good start. We just need to lower the offset value. Now we can minimize the layer window and open up the timeline. Change the duration of the animation to 1500 milliseconds. Right click on the layer's name to copy the animation. Then right click on every other layer's names to paste the animation to them. When it's done, adjust the times when the animations should start. Close the timeline and check out the animations. Everything fades in from the left, then the animated heading layer starts playing, which makes the whole experience mesmerizing. The other sides are very similar, so I won't show the entire slide creation processes, but I will show their unique features. The next slide has a similar layout to the previous one, but this slide has a two column element separating the left side from the right. An image layer should come into the right side, showing a mobile phone. I would like to have other image layers behind this layer, but the content editing mode won't allow me to do that, so I will need canvas editing mode. Put down the next image layer and select its image. Then put down the other image layer and select this image too. With canvas editing mode, you can move your layers anywhere on the slide. The order of what should be on the top of the other elements can be adjusted on the layer list. The way our editing modes are working is that the content mode elements have to be on top or bottom of the canvas elements. Because of this, when you have the canvas elements on the bottom, you cannot click on them anymore in the slide editor. To be able to access them, hide the content layer on the layer list. Like this you can adjust the canvas layers and once you are done, you can turn back on the content layer's visibility. The responsive behavior of content and canvas mode layers are completely different. In canvas mode, your layers are just floating. They don't affect the slide or each other. They will just go smaller or bigger with the slide. In content mode, the layers are taking up space. They are pushing each other lower as they become higher and the entire slide grows if more space is needed. Because of this, you have to be careful mixing these modes, as you won't be able to perfectly adjust canvas and content mode layers to each other. As you can see, the canvas mode layers are resized and moved differently. In mobile view, I won't even have space for the canvas layers, so I will just hide them. You can select any layer from the layer list too, to access their settings. Select the canvas layers and hide them for mobile view from the toolbar. On the third slide, the canvas content mode differences are more visible. This canvas mode layer is positioned from the bottom right corner of the slide, as you see it from its alignment point. If you start resizing the slider, the canvas layer will stay on the bottom right part of the slide, while the content mode layer is vertically centered on its column. 
To have a slide with a background video, you should create an empty slide. Under the Background tab, at the video, you will find the Background Video option, where you can insert the URL of your MP4 video. This will make the video to be the background of the slide, but a lot of browsers are limiting autoplaying videos on websites, so this video might not play. Because of this, you should also pick a background image for the video slide. This way, if the video is not able to play, the background image will be displayed. You can find a contact form too on the last slide. This form can only be achieved by custom coding because there are too many customization possibilities. In the description of this video, you will find a link to a tutorial documentation which can show you how you can create your own form. Go to the slider setting to select bullets. Choose the number bullets. At the dot style, the background color can be changed. This should be transparent and the side paddings should be smaller. Add the 2 pixel transparent border because the active state will have a border too. And we need these not active bullets to have the same size. The bullets will be rounded. If you hover over the bullets, you can see that the normal and hover state changes immediately. Because of this, you can use a CSS code to have a smooth transition. Go to the active state and clear its tab to copy the normal state settings. The border color should be white, and our style is done, so it can be applied. You can change the font settings at the font manager. The font color of the normal state should be a bit transparent, the font size should be smaller, and the line height will be 1. This was the last setting our slider needed. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned a little more about editing modes. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more similar videos in the future, subscribe. Have a nice day! Goodbye.